Hi guys, this is Jason here from Nathaniel. In this lesson, we are going to do a lot really. So we are going to first look at one of my favorite songs of all time from the movie The Sound of Music called Do Re Mi or Do A Dear, I guess. I don't know what it's officially called. I think it's Do Re Mi. And then we look at the melody, obviously how to play the melody, the every single note, the phrasing, the timing and all that. Uh, we have it notated also for you so you could check it out, you could download it uh, at the link. And uh, we'll also look at the chords of the song and the actual chords on the original key with all of the embellishments. And uh, what I also like to do is to talk about how you can understand this song a bit better and how this song can help you really grow forward as a composer. By teaching you the concept this song really uses or really stresses on a lot which is secondary dominance. That's what we call it in theory which is basically a topic which allows you to use chords out of the scale and then resolve back to chords which are inside the scale. Okay and last but not least which you have to stay tuned for at the very end we are going to put it all together by developing various versions of this song. You'll be able to sing and play it together if you're a singer and a piano player or if you'd like to play the melody uh, as well as the chords with a nice rhythm pattern at whichever skill level I guess there will be something for you to digest. So before we get started it'll be great if you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, turn on the bell for notifications, like, share and anything else you'd like to do which will be nice for the video. So let's just get started now with the melody of the song. So the song's on B flat major. Let's first look at the scale. B flat, E flat. Those are your two flats. B flat and E flat. It's a really nice scale on the piano. Okay, B flat, C, D, E flat, F, G, A, B flat. Again. So three two flats in the scale. Now, a few tricks before you actually start playing the melody. You could play B flat with your thumb, but generally we avoid the thumb, especially when playing melodies on the black note. So you could just use your index finger to kind of go before the thumb, which is always on C. C will be a nice spot for the thumb. And the index finger could go before the C to play B flat and it can go above the C to play D. So, so you could just get acquainted with that sort of a drill. Something like that and then, of course, you may also get used to the fingering of the B-flat scale which is generally we start on the index finger. Index, thumb, back to index as I told you it crosses, middle, cross, end on the ring. Okay, so that's pretty much it. So let's look at the melody. I'll play it to you line by line and then let's look at it. So first line, Do a deer, a female deer. Okay, Do a deer, a female deer. So you could go, Do a deer. Now, Do a deer, a female. You have to come back to B flat. So maybe either use your index finger to slide back or you can even use your thumb. If you're okay with the thumb, you can you play with the thumb. So, Do a deer, a female deer. Okay, and then Re, you need to cross your thumb over to the C. Re, a drop of golden sun. So I guess we'll just stick with this fingering. First three fingers and first three fingers for even the second line. So, Do a deer, a female deer, Re, a drop of golden sun. One more time, let's do that together. Do a deer, a female deer, Re, a drop of golden sun. Okay, and then moving forward, almost the same rhythm. Ta, ta, da. Ta da ta ta. So that's a dotted eighth note following, followed by a quaver, right? That's pretty much the structure. Tam pa bum pa bum pam pam. So if you can get that rhythmic phrase or the motif into your head, you can really use it for pretty much the whole song. Okay, moving on. So what have we looked at so far? Do a deer, a female deer, ray a drop of golden sun, and now me a name I call myself. Okay, 
again very similar it's just a pattern going up and she sings it like that do is the first note of the scale as per you know the western solfege language in india do is the sa or the first swara of the scale or you can just call it the root if you will so you go do a deer a female deer so the first word or the first note is do or that solfege interval name right and of course it's spelled as d o e which is actually a, a female deer so it's a nice interplay on words really amazingly written song and if you haven't already make sure you watch the movie it's a great musical and just watching it even without needing to learn it or transcribe it or any of that just watching it is education watching and listening and digesting the music is is education you know so moving forward do we've done do a deer a female deer ray a drop of golden sun forget the left hand for now i'm going to come to the left hand so hang on let's only look at the right hand moving on uh me which is the third note of b flat which is d me a name i call myself and then far a long long way to run okay me a name i call myself which is the third note d me a name i call myself far a long long way to run so you could use your last three fingers for the far a long long way to run far a long long way to run so you keep that shape sort of here so let's do the first four lines now which we've learned and that's half the song so let's see do a deer a female deer ray a drop of golden sun moving on me a name i call myself far a long long way to run okay i apologize for not being able to sing as good and as high as julie andrews but i'm just trying to give you a sense of the melody right and if you're a female vocalist please go one octave higher it's not something which i am very comfortable doing but yeah it will be your octave will be do a dear a female dear you'll have to go high it sounds really nice for a female voice actually speaking for a male voice it goes a bit low but anyway so you go now moving on to the the 1 2 3 4 fifth line now in the song which is so a needle pulling thread okay let's get the fingering so a needle pulling thread okay so a needle pulling thread again so being the fifth note of the scale that's f and again a great play on words so a needle pulling thread so <clears throat> so cross your index so a needle pulling thread pinky on the thread so a needle pulling thread and then let's move on to the la la a note to follow so so here you will have to cross your thumb so it's slightly tricky just follow along so coming back to that so lyric so a needle pulling thread okay la a note to follow so so i do note to tuck your thumb under the middle finger la a note to follow so you end there okay and then the same melody sort of keeps going higher t a drink with jam and bread okay t a drink with jam and bread okay i like to kind of end with my ring finger because then i of course that will bring us back to do as she says so you come back the finger also needs to come back isn't it so let's just do that again from the so line so a needle pulling thread so he goes so a needle pulling thread cross that then la a note to follow so now t t a drink with jam and bread try to end with your ring finger okay so t a drink with jam and bread then that will bring us back to do repeat that will bring us so you can do us that will bring us you could slide this finger in then play the thumb that will bring us back 
to do o o o do a dear and you come exactly to the index finger on b flat or the thumb on b flat if you want to use the thumb that will bring us back to do o o o do a uh, dear uh, and goes on okay let's just do the whole thing once and uh, fingering is not specific it's not compulsory that you follow these fingerings but i've just given you a kind of a basic guideline to get acquainted because it's a little tricky melody right you find that there are quite a few notes outside the scale and we learn this melody actually in school so one might argue that it's a very simple song you know sometimes it's branded with a nursery rhyme and stuff like that but i think it's a very very interesting song it has a lot of harmonic and melodic movement and also rhythmic stuff okay so let's just wind up the discussion on the melody by doing it you know with the whole thing from the beginning okay and i'm as i said i'm just playing the left hand for effect i'm going to talk about the left hand very shortly so do a dear a female dear re re a drop of golden sun me me a name i call myself far a long long way to run so so a needle pulling thread la la a note to follow so a drink with jam and bread that will bring us back to do o o o do and then you can do it with the tempo of the song something like do a dear a female dear re a drop of golden sun me a name i call myself a long long way to run so a needle pulling thread la a note to follow so tea a drink with jam and bread that will bring us back to do o o o do okay so that's about the melody now we are going to move to the harmony the chords and as i tell you the chords i am going to also look at a little bit of the theory behind the chords because there are some chords which i think need to be explained they are outside the key so why is that the case usually chords come from the scale that's why we write the scale before we learn the songs so now let's look at the amazing chords in this song right so now let's look at the left hand um well there are quite a few chords right but let's just start with the roots of the chords and i'm going to call out the chord as we play so in the left hand what you could do to get started is just hold the chord don't bother about any kind of rhythm because the melody is already kind of tricky so just hold the chord or what could also work is just hold down a few notes of the chord right for two reasons one is it makes it easy to play and the second reason it also sounds better because in the bass if you start playing many notes it can give you a very muddy sound so even if you knock off a couple of notes of the chord like for example the fifth which is not so important it could work you know so let's see how it goes i'm going to start with b flat and i'm only going to talk about the chord roots first do a dear a female dear re a drop of golden sun so that's b flat and play each chord as a simple pulse four hits each bar do a dear you can use octaves as well do a dear a female dear re a drop of golden sun or you could even use toggled octaves or scattered octaves so do if you like that very bass like right and same thing for me a name i call myself same story b flat and f me a name i call myself f for a long long way to run and then it changes a little bit but we start with b flat as we did earlier so a needle pulling thread there you go to e flat la a note to there you go to c at the la la a note to follow so you go to f there now d d a drink with jam and bread to g and then you can drop it to f if you want 
that will bring us E flat back to do o o o o. So I would imagine the first four lines are rather easy, right? You just go B flat and F. The, it's the remaining four lines which are the challenge. So anyway, let's do the first four lines once more just to get a hang of it. Do a oh dear B flat F and then back to B flat F and then you do so a needle pulling thread that's E flat okay then C with la la a note to follow so that's F then you go T with D here T a drink with jam and bread so i'll do that again t d a drink with jam and bread g f that will bring e flat us f back to do okay do do so these are all root notes of the chords right you can also now play the actual chord so b flat major b flat d f So do a deer, a female deer, ray. Now this is how I am playing the F chord. I am playing it as an F seventh. So instead of playing that whole triad, which sounds a bit cluttered, I'm just making it easy for myself and just playing two notes, F and E flat. So let's do the the two chords. Do a deer, a female deer, ray. A drop of golden sun. Okay, back. Na na name. I call myself F. Fa a long long way to. This is how I'm playing F dominant seventh. Do do F E flat. Okay, moving forward back to B flat. So a needle pulling thread. You could play E flat with an inversion. So a needle pulling thread. Okay, then. That's La with the C seventh, or you can just play a normal C major. La, a note to follow. So that's F major with an inversion. So let's do that again. So a needle pulling thread. E flat with its inversion. Then La, a note to follow. So F with an inversion. Then D major. T, a drink with jam and bread. So it's sort of like root inversion, then root position of C, inversion of F, then root position of D, inversion of G minor. Let's now do it from the so again, just to recap: B flat, so a needle pulling thread, E flat with inversion, La, C or C seventh. So that's F, then D, D, a drink with jam and bread, G minor. Then you can do B flat right after that, or you can ignore the B flat. Bread that will bring us E flat back to F major, B flat. Do 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 do. Yeah, so those are your chords. So in in conclusion, we've looked at the melody in the right hand, and we've looked at two ways to accompany your harmony in the left hand. The first and the most simple way is to just take the roots of the chord, isolate the roots of the chord, and then figure out a rhythm pattern and think like how a bass player in a band would think. Right? I think that's the most simplistic but yet groovy way to get started with your left hand. Some people try to play the entire chord and then the problem is not only about playing the chord it's about shifting from one to the other which you may find a bit tricky so if you're newer to the instrument and if you find if you're still getting acquainted with the tune just play simple bass notes in the left and then you can graduate towards the full chords or even stick with the root root and octave kind of thing it sounds quite good if you ask me it sounds quite nice right sounds quite cool and then you we have the chord system hold the chords 
with the pulse or just hold it that's the chord thing e flat c f with inversion d g minor e flat f b flat right so moving forward we are going to analyze this song a bit closely right we are going to do that in the next part of this series so if you if your intention is just to kind of play the melody get the harmony going in the left hand sing along i i hope this was good uh, moving forward we are going to really explore the song and see theoretically why it's such a masterpiece okay so head over to the next part and before you do if you haven't already don't forget to subscribe to our channel hit that bell for for notifications and uh, leave us a comment that'll be great and you can also download the notation and all my notes at the link in the description that'll also be a great support to our youtube channel see you in the next one